Out front now, Republican Senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul. He sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. You said you're certain the Crown me. Prince was involved in and directed the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, now you see this video of an apparent body double in Khashoggi's clothes, wearing a fake beard on the same day that he was killed. What's your reaction? A little too many coincidences to think, oh, this was just an accidental death. Uh, you send a forensic pathologist with a bone saw just in case you might have a fist fight where you have to dismember somebody. I mean, how horrific. But then also having a body double. I think there's a lot of reasons to think this was planned. And I think because they have such an authoritarian government, nothing over there happens that's not directed from above. You don't act without orders. So it's kind of uh, stretches credulity to think that the crown prince wasn't involved in this. Now, Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al Jaber um, attacked you uh, for implicating the crown prince. Uh, here's what he had to say. I find it uh, very surprising that somebody 6,000 miles away can be certain about an event that happened 6,000 miles away with no access to information or intelligence. So this is a judgment call on the part of Senator uh, Paul. This is not based in fact. It's just based on emotions and based on speculation. What's your response to the Saudi foreign minister? I think he's got a lot of gall to lecture the United States about presumption of innocence. The Saudis currently have over 3,000 people being held without any trial, without any presumption of innocence in their prison. These are political prisoners. They have nearly 1,000 of these prisoners have been there for more than three years. They recently, in the last year or so, killed a uh, Shia sheikh by the name of Nimr al-Nimr. They're holding his nephew, who's been in prison and is supposed to be in prison for life, for attending a protest rally. So, no, the Saudis shouldn't be lecturing, any, lecturing anybody about the presumption of innocence. You're calling for the U.S. to suspend arms sales to Saudi Arabia uh, over this incident. President Trump has said repeatedly he, he's opposed to that. And today he actually mentioned your name while discussing those arms sales to the Saudis. Take a listen. I agree with Rand on a lot of things. I don't want to lose all of that investment that's being made in our country. I don't want to lose a million jobs. I don't want to lose $110 billion in terms of investment, but it's really $450 billion if you include other than military. So that's very important. So he says he agrees with you on a lot of things, but he doesn't want to lose all these hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in right. arms deals and the like. How are you going to convince the president uh, to get on board with this and, and that you're right and he's wrong? Well, as you know, the president and I get along pretty well, and I take him at his word, but I also try to say that, you know, I have a different perspective. My perspective is that the Saudis and a lot of authoritarian governments, they see strength. They want to see you act with strength, and they won't respect you if you don't. I fear if the president capitulates to them, uh, he'll not be seen as a strong leader, and I think that uh, is something that the president should listen long and hard to. But I also don't think that jobs or arms sales should be seen as a jobs program. I think our military arms are unique uniquely really owned by the taxpayer. We develop planes only because the government wants it for our national defense. Most of the arms are sold to our government. And so I don't think that we should be, you know, if that were true, we would sell arms to China, to Russia, to every country in the world if it was just about jobs. It's about whether those countries share our vision and whether those arms actually will enhance our national security. And in the case of Saudi Arabia, I think they've done a lot of things that really are deleterious to our national security and actually increase the risk of war. One of the interesting things about the president's pitch on this jobs issue uh, is that he changes the number of American jobs impacted by these uh, arms sales to the Saudi. Uh, it keeps increasing uh, every time almost the president talks about it. Uh, take a listen. This is uh, President Trump starting in March up until uh, just recently. We're talking about over 40,000 jobs in the United States. It's $110 billion. I believe it's the largest order ever made. It's 450,000 jobs. It's 500,000 jobs, American jobs. I would prefer that we don't use as retribution uh, canceling $110 billion worth of work, which means 600,000 jobs. I think it's over a million jobs. That's not helpful for us to cancel an order like that. From 40,000 jobs to a million jobs, uh, what's your response? 
Well, I think it's, it's notoriously hard to estimate jobs, but what I would say is I wouldn't do it for one job because I think that Saudi Arabia is the largest state sponsor of radical Islam, violent jihad. They fund tens of thousands of madrasas teaching, teaching this hatred of Christianity, Judaism, and Hinduism, frankly, and all others. And so I think really Saudi Arabia has been a big part of the whole problem that we've dealt with with worldwide terrorism for, for decades now. I think what they're doing in Yemen is atrocious. I think millions of people are living on the edge of starvation because of this sort of proxy war that the Saudis are fighting in Yemen and the blockade of food. And so, no, I don't think we should be supporting them. I think by supporting the Saudis in the war in Yemen, it's more likely ultimately that al-Qaeda will grow stronger in Yemen in that chaos. Terrorism grows and feeds on chaos. It did it in Libya, it did it in Syria, did it in Iraq. And I fear that Yemen, the worse the war gets, the more chaos, the more terrorism they'll ultimately be. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, always good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jake.